we are going to be talking about the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, obviously, this has a huge impact on how our puppy raisers are able to be on campus with us, how service dogs are able to go out in public, and the different rules that apply with it. So what is the ADA? The ADA prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability and employment on all levels in public accommodation, commercial facilities, transportation, and telecommunications. Um, so to define what a disability is under the ADA, it is a person who has a physical or mental impairment that is substantially limits one's major life activities. Um, a person who has a history or record of such impairment or a person who is perceived by others by having such impairment. Um, in this picture you see right here, no, that is not Naya, that is Midas. Um, he is a service dog for Greta and they live in New York. Um, I'm not really sure what disability she has, but as you see, she is confined to a wheelchair. So Midas is able to help her navigate that, pick up keys, take off her jacket and stuff like that. So to define service dogs under the ADA. Um, the exact definition copy and pasted from the ADA website is a service dog or service animals are defined as dogs that are individually trained to do work or perform tasks for the person um, with the disability. Um, so that could be a guiding eye dog, guiding a person who is blind, um, pulling a wheelchair as uh, Midas might with Greta, or here is Chance and his service dog. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm not, I've seen videos on them on Facebook of his service dog pulling Chance around. Um, it could be calming a person with PTSD symptoms if they've been diagnosed with that. Um, as you can see, this is Matt. He is actually locally in Fredericksburg slash Stafford. Um, this is his service, second service dog, Shiloh, and he's helping him at the dentist right there. Um, so more on when these dogs go in public. A service dog must be under the control of its handler, um, and they must be on a leash unless the disability interferes with the use of that leash. Um, for example, Matt is confined to a wheelchair, so he has one leash that goes to Shiloh that he holds, and then his mom and dad have another leash that he that they hold um, together, so Matt feels like he has some type of control with Shiloh, um, but in reality, the mom and dad are controlling Shiloh for Matt. Um, it's a little different with Chance. Chance is able to hold the leash for um, his dog. I forget his name. I think his name is Walden. Um, so he's able to tell Chan or tell Walden what to do and navigate him while he's in his own wheelchair. Um, so then again, when they're out in public, businesses that serve the public generally allow service animals to accompany someone such as Matt or Chance with a disability in all areas of the facility where the public is allowed to go. So they are allowed anywhere. Um, they just because, so let's say, someone goes into the store and you see a service dog and you're afraid of dogs. They are, they can't, that business cannot tell that service dog and handler to leave because they have a right to be there. Um, just as you have every right to be there, they do as well. Alrighty, so see, there are many different types of service dogs um, that, you know, do different things and serve their handlers in different ways. But CCI mainly works with three types of dogs, um, actually four. Um, so they have, all of their dogs fall under the assistance service dog um, category that you see here um, with a graphic that CCI has wonderfully made. Um, so service dogs, like Simone said, have public access rights. They are considered under the ADA a piece of medical equipment. Um, they get to go with their handler anywhere that the public is allowed, provided that it does not change the the um, like tone of the service. So like um, there was an issue a few years ago where someone, like during golf tournament, because it wasn't publicly accessible, um, they it was like a whole court case whether that person could have their dog because it, it changed how the golf tournament worked. Um, but otherwise, they are regularly allowed 
pretty much anywhere that the public goes. The one really big place that like they can't go is like operating rooms. Um, so if your handler has surgery, um, their dog can't necessarily go with them, which makes a lot of sense, you would think. Um, so yeah, they're permitted in any place that the public is allowed, but at the same time, they have to be behaved. Um, they have to be calm. They can't be barking. They can't have accidents in public, you know, things like that. They have to be obviously trained and performing a service for their handler. Um, if they are acting out and not in control, that's when the businesses can't ask you, ask the handler to remove their dog um, or leave with their dog. Um, a big thing that is recent in the past few years uh, is people taking advantage of emotional support animals. Um, people, the laws themselves are not very, I don't know, like public, I guess. Not a lot of people know about them. People aren't educated on them. Um, so ESAs or emotional support animals only have access to pretty much household. Like if, if you go somewhere, if you're, if you move and your new apartment or new house or new whatever has a no pets policy, if you have a legitimate ESA or even not a legitimate at this point, um, you, you're allowed to live with your ESA if, even if there's, you know, a no pets policy. But ESAs don't have public access. They require no training um, or anything like that. But just like service dogs, there's no registration or registry or anything or certification for your ESA. So those types of things online are all fake, but people still think they're real and that's how they get away with stuff. Um, <laughs> it's lots of fun. But yeah, ESAs, the biggest thing is they don't have public access. Um, so when you see people holding their little purse dogs in public and saying, oh, it's a service animal, or they even say it's an emotional support animal, thinking that that means it's a service animal, they're two very different things. Um, so going on to what we have, we have puppies in training, or puppies in program, um, as CCI calls them. They, we've, we pretty much rely on the goodwill of businesses. Um, the service dogs in training laws vary from state to state. In Virginia, provided they are being handled by their trainer or continuing the training of that dog, we are, once they're six months old, we legally have access, but we don't use that with CCI. We rely on the goodwill of businesses for everywhere we go. Um, so if somebody asks us to leave, we can educate them and we usually do, um, but, you know, ultimately there's nothing that we can do because we don't want to put a bad name to CCI. Because whenever we go out in public, especially when our dogs have those vests on, it's a huge thing and we have to be representing CCI in the best way possible. Um, so that way there's no backlash and things like that. Um, and then we have therapy animals, which a lot of people confuse with um, what CCI has for uh, facility dogs. Um, so therapy animals, um, they are temperament tested. So they kind of like, they just have to be overall all calm but they have again have no real training in a sense um, and they can only really go in the places that um, places previously allow them so sometimes like hospitals brings in phys uh, not facility dogs, therapy dogs um, and so the hospitals in advance say like yes you can bring your your Jesus your <laughs> therapy dog I'm so sorry someone um, but um, yeah so they, they have pre-approved things. They don't have public access, things like that. You can't just take your therapy dog into the store. Um, a lot of times different places like um, therapy and things like ther like actual therapists and stuff like that, they will have therapy dogs. Um, and sometimes people think they're service dogs, but they're usually not. Um, so that kind of, the people obviously uh, bleh, sometimes confuse them with facility dogs because facility dogs a lot of the times work with multiple people. Um, but facility dogs work in things like rehab centers or like Naya does. Naya works in a child advocacy center working with patients to get them op to open up about trauma, things like that. Um, but Naya still passed the same certification test that all service dogs have to pass, at least from CCI. Um, and so she still knows how to do all of her 40 plus commands and she still does use them just like service dogs do or CCI service dogs or skill companions do. Um, but she just uses them in a different way and uses them with multiple people instead of serving one person. But yeah. Um, and then, oh, so if by chance, you know, you, you, you work for somewhere like Target or Walmart or something like that, and you do see a, what you think might not be a real service dog in public, there are only two questions that businesses and the public can really ask people. 
um, about their service dog. And it's, is the service dog, service animal required because of a disability? And then what task has the dog been trained to perform? Um, so, you know, if you think a service dog is fake in public and it's acting out, you can't really say like, do you really need that service dog? Or is that a service dog? Or is it an emotional support animal? Um, things like that. It's, there's not really enough or not really a lot that, um, to validate service dogs. Um, they pretty much just have to be behaved and a lot of people can get away with it even if they're not real. But yeah. Yes, and then so our last point of our ADA is education is the most important tool you can use to stop service dog fraud. Um, like Alex said, if you do work in a business, um, utilize those two questions. Question those people, you have every right. Of course, talk to your manager first. They may have other um, outlines and rules and stuff like that. But knowing that you can ask those two questions to prevent service dog fraud um, in stores is definitely key. Um, does anybody have any questions about the ADA or some rules that have been outlined, um, such as emotional support dogs, therapy dogs, and stuff like that? Um, I just have a question. Do you know, like, if you go into a business and then they, like, tell you, like, no, you can't have your dog here, like, and, like they are a service dog, like, where you can go to file for, like, a complaint or anything like that? Like if I went to like, um, I guess like a little, like a store and then they were like, you know, like, no, your dog can't be here. Like if I go to a grocery store and then like the people there, like they, I'm like, no, he's a service dog. And they're like, no, show me your paperwork. And I'm like, that's not real. That's, that's fake. And they're like, no, I need to see his certification and stuff like that. And then, you know, like, I was just wondering if you knew like where you can go like afterwards like obviously like I'm gonna just leave the store at that point because it's just like that point is like too stressful but yeah um so yeah Alex you got it I'm not really sure um so I will say that like our PIPs puppies and program do get kicked out places sometimes because people don't know those laws um and there's not much we can do, but I did file a report with the ADA once because I was so pissed. Um, where I used to work, they did they made me deny a service dog, and I was pissed. Um, so I quit the next week, and um, I re I reported a claim to them to the ADA or to like the actual like government office of where the ADA is placed. Um, but unfortunately, no matter how many times a business does it they're not going to really like it's on record. Cool. But one, nobody has access to that record to see it. And they're never going to follow up with it because they don't have the money to look into every, you know, claim that they have. Um, so really there's not much you can do. And that's why we stress education so much. Um, of course you can always file that claim, but like businesses don't care. You can always educate them, but a lot of times they're just going to be to be kind they're just be they're just going to be assholes um and they don't really care um and so a lot of times for things like that i just stop going there and i know that doesn't make much of a difference to their personal business and things like that um but it's definitely really frustrating when you educate and they don't do anything um but yeah the paperwork thing the certification thing like cci dogs are certified because there is an international test for that but you don't have to ever show that certification there's no real paperwork um as far as the U.S. goes for service dogs and things like that. Um, so if anyone ever asks you to see that, like that's not real and you know that that's not real, so that's good. Um, but yeah, the most you can really do is educate and if you really want to, you can file a claim with the ADA, but there's really nothing that they're gonna actually do. Unfortunately. If, yeah, Alex put that perfectly. And if you went into like, let's say downtown Fredericksburg and you went into, let's say Benny's and Benny's was like, no, you can't bring your service dog in here. You can always talk to a manager, hire up, educate that manager. They may not want to hear you, but you just have to use your, your big girl voice and be like, this is what I know. I know I'm right. And be confident in yourself in that. Um, other than that, there's really nothing else you can do besides trying to educate the, the manager and hopefully they'll relay that information to their, um, their employees. Any other questions? That was a good one.
I have one more. Um, what would like I've done some looking into it and what's the policy for like rentals and stuff like that? Like, let's say like I'm going on a vacation rental and, or like a, to a hotel and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys have encountered that, but like some places, like obviously like if they're like, I need to your dogs, like certification or I need their number and stuff like that. Most of the time you're just like, I'm just gonna, no, you don't understand. That's not the rule. And then you're just like, I'm gonna go to a different place. And then like, I had a rental tell me they made me like, it, they were gonna charge me an extra hundred dollars. And I was like, you know, that's like illegal, right? Like, and I was like, send me an email with that. And they never sent me an email and I never had to pay the extra hundred dollars. Cause they knew like, if they sent me that email, I could go and file a claim and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, I know we took Naya to a like resort in Williamsburg and I let them know beforehand and I explained my whole spiel. Um, of course, they're going to look at you like really, you always get that unfortunately, um, but they did allow her to come in. Um, they did not charge us like any extra fees or stuff like that as they should not um, do that. They should not be charging you extra fees for your dog being there. Um, I know Mary Megan, she graduated and she had a rotary. She lived in the Stratford Apartments right across from UMW and um, she did not have to pay, I guess it's like a $50 fee for, um, for rotary. So you just have to pick your battles with that. It sucks, I know, um, but technically they're not supposed to be charging you or denying you these access rights. Again, it might vary state by state for rentals and things like that, but I'm not sure. Actually, I think that I'm like 90% sure, so don't quote me on this, um, but at all hotels and B&Bs and things like that, they're all considered public places. Um, so your service dog has just as much public access as anything else, and they're not allowed to charge you pet fees or anything like that or make you hold any paperwork. Um, the only business in a sense that is ever allowed to ask you for anything is an airline and that's because there is a literal separate act for airlines because of everything that you know people try to pull with ESAs and service dogs and things like that. Um, and that's always my favorite when people quote that at me. They're like well airlines can ask for paperwork and I'm like cool are you an airline? I'm like no. And that's that's the end of it. Um, but yeah. So they can't ask you for any paperwork and they can't file find um, you any fees or anything like that. But they're just, they're still considered a public place. I know something that I've seen like in the service dog community with access issues is they make like an ADA card and they have the ADA printed out because sometimes people need that physical like, hey, if you don't have that already, like get one of those because those cards tend to be the thing that, oh, it's like a physical like, this is what the actual government is. They can, they're not just listening to your words. They have, you have something that's legitimate and you're not just, or have it saved on your phone, but I've seen a lot of the little cards on it. Our puppy raisers do have a card that states their name and things like that. And on the back of it, I'm pretty sure it has like a little statement about the ADA. I think Rebecca's gonna pull it up. Um, but I, you should probably look into doing something like that. I know it sounds, it's not required of you or anybody, but again, just having that feasible thing in their hand might give them more of like a, oh, okay, even though it's not required. It doesn't have to be anything extensive. I don't, I don't think theirs is either. No, it just has like, um, it's like a laminated card and then it just has, um, like canine companions information on the back. It doesn't have the actual ADA because we're not, we don't technically have public access. Has any, do any of you work in like a restaurant or like a business and like you've encountered anything like this? I'd love to hear your experiences because I know it's, it's so different for everybody. No. Um, I haven't encountered that, but I've been on a plane before, and sometimes, like, flight attendants, they think service dogs are just, like, super cute, and they just want to pet them, so um, I was on a plane once, and they called the person's name on the little intercom and asked for their seat number when the person raised their hand. They're like, oh, we heard you have a dog. Can we pet it? 
instead of just like leaving them be that that's horrible i people ask like our dogs names all the time and i'm always hesitant to give their name to these people because then that evokes them to be like oh naya 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 or zinger 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 or agi 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 and you're like ah no like no that's just a dog i promise all right are we ready for some kahoot because i am Paige, so I don't know how to do this. Paige needs to take over. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm going to share my screen again, and then um, there will be a join code that you can either use on your laptop or um, your phone, but I'd recommend using your phone if you're currently on Zoom on your laptop. I hope that makes sense. All right, here we go. Here's who. I'll be a second. I have to kick Augie off. <laughs> We'll even, we'll even get some fun Kahoot music in here. I've never played with the auto-generated nicknames before. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, that is funny. I didn't know they did uh, auto-generated names any. That's, that's cool. Oh, we can't hear you, Simone. So no. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Wayne Crab, and I cut myself with a, a knife and avocado, and I look like a crab. That's funny. Who are you? Hello. <clears throat> Hunter's playing along too. He's so great. <laughs> <laughs> Watch me get something wrong. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think made these questions. <laughs> yeah, it was 1975. Yeah. And they used to use corgis, by the way, when they first started CCI. Wild. Border collies? At one point, they border collies, too. All right. Brave Wombat is in the lead. Who's Brave Wombat? Y'all are good. Thank you, everybody, for that one. Really, yes, good job. Heart right there. <laughs> Shining Wildcat took the lead. You're shining in first place. You guys are good. You're doing you're doing really well today. Y'all are so smart. Oh, it's a oh. competition now. Dang, I don't know about this. Yeah. I'm gonna have to fight that one out. Nice job. All right, the board did not move. Oh, sorry. The answer is wrong. Y'all got it right. I'm sorry. That's my bad. I was like, huh? Yeah, no, I think I had tried to change the question and it didn't save. I was supposed to do the, it was going to be the inverse of it. You can't be super involved without being a puppy raiser, but you know, here we are. Happens. I'm sorry I lost your streak. <laughs> Ooh. 
I guess these questions are just too easy. I thought they were hard. Oh, I'm like. <laughs> Ooh. brothers and they are the same age and um Augie is a little younger it's okay it is okay that was meant to be tricky <laughs> brave um, wombat still. Reed crab had a had a real good moment there i was a little finger finger happy there <laughs> <laughs> oh multi double point yeah, you get to pick multiple I'm Oh no, it's just an answer. I'm sorry, that's my bad. It also didn't make this. It is one answer. It's not one answer. Yeah, so some razors. I was talking to Alex about this last night. She said some razors will have it like with the puppy case puppy cape or vest is on there means it's working. Um, it really just depends on the preference of the razor and how they've been training their dogs. Um, a lot of the times they'll be given the command release and that will um, let the puppy know it's time to play. Oh, I guess there's no movement. Okay. Oh, again, double points. Yeah. This one. Because it's I tried to make the trickier one double play. I still really got that right. Uh see Rotary, he was the third dog, and he is a change of career dog, so he's living his best life with Mary Megan. And Nelson, who is Naya's brother, um, graduated the same time as Naya did. Well, like a few months. But yes. I'm Decisive Llama and Blue Sloth are making their way up. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> nice job. Whatever brave wombat is, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome to come up to us and we'll you can always ask us if you're gonna pet the dog um, but never just like stick a hand out there what Rebecca sent me for this one and it is fall of 2013. I should have known that. You should have Rebecca. You I should have known that. that. Rebecca <laughs> you're the FBI agent here. How did you not like I don't understand. I don't get it. Uh, but it was started by Farah and what was the other dog's name? Dragon. 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 <laughs> Farah and Dragon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brave Wombat took the lead, and Speedy Penguin is on a roll. They're speedy. That's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, service dogs can be any breed. Oh. Yak is <laughs> rapidly increasing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they are in Santa Rosa, California. Has anybody ever been? I've never been to Santa Rosa. I'd love to go to California though. Nice job. 
think if we do this later in the year, we need some hard questions. Yeah, we need really tricky questions next time. <laughs> we were just trying to be nice, you know, you just never know. Yeah, it's true. Oh, okay. Also, my bad. I totally, made, I totally accidentally did that. Made oh. color on the Yeah. yeah I um, it, and then I was like, why not? Okay, to be clear, puppies in training, such as Zinger, Augie, and LJ, wear yellow vests. Yes. And then graduate dogs, such as Naya and Nelson, wear blue vests. Yes, that's my bad. <laughs> in Paige's defense, she's very sleep-deprived this week, so it's okay. I didn't save some of my stuff, so... Boots are a pain in the butt to make. Sleep deprivation is part of it. Multi select. Oh no. Okay, I got this. Yeah, so Zinger, Augie, and LJ will all be on campus. Zeus sadly will not be, as his uh, razor graduated last year. He still missed LJ area. on that one. What happened? LJ was spelled wrong? I'm, I missed LJ. I had them all three selected and it didn't click it. Nice job. Yes, it's called a gentle leader, not a Muslim. Thank you, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Good job, y'all. Even with my slip-ups, you still did very well. That was so much fun. Did you guys enjoy that? Would you do it again? Maybe we'll throw in some, like, random questions. I never make the podium. That made my whole day. <laughs> we love that for you. <laughs> yes, but that's all we had um, for today. Um, Good luck moving in this week. If you're moving in, stay safe. Um, you might see some puppies there on campus walking around. Um, and then next Tuesday, we are going to have our official first puppy raiser interest meeting. Everything you need to know about puppy raising, which is going to be so much fun. Um, and let's all just adore Lacey's dog that's loving on her right now. Look at his, look at his little face. <laughs> Okay, anybody have any questions for us, for puppy raisers? Okay, sounds good. We will see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.